Well, our January transfer window is finally underway. And let's just say this could get interesting. Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of Addicts Editions in the 2022-23 January transfer window. This is of course my Charlton transfer series where we go through all of the signings that Charlton make in transfer windows, discuss them, go into a bit of depth and find out whether I believe they are good or bad additions to the squad. Charlton Athletic have completed the signings of recently released QPR striker and of course former addict, the return of Macaulay Bon, and we have also completed the signing of Coventry City fullback Todd Kane. Bon joining the club on a permanent deal, but in a contract until the end of the season, and Todd Kane joins the club on loan from the championship side Coventry City until the end of the season. Two for Thursday, Dean Olden finally gets his first acquisitions under his belt as Charlton manager, and he's gone with a double signing, Bon and Kane joining us, and like I say... They're definitely interesting, but I think what's really done it for me is the lack of, I guess you could say, ambition with these signings and the short-term contracts that these guys are here for. But we'll talk about that in a bit more detail a bit later on. But first of all, as you guys know, we will go through the club's articles in regards to the two signings, and then we will discuss a bit more about their statistics and whether I think these are decent signings for Charlton in the short term rather than the long term. So let's get started, shall we? Beginning, of course, with the first signing of the two, that being Macaulay Bon, obviously making his return to the club. Charlton Athletic are delighted to confirm the signing of striker Macaulay Bon, who has signed a contract until the end of the season. The 27-year-old who scored 12 goals and registered four assists while on loan in League One side Ipswich Town last term rejoins the Addicts following a successful spell with the club between 2019 and 2020. Upon joining Charlton, the Zimbabwe international stepped up three divisions and scored 11 goals for the club during his debut championship campaign. He becomes the Addicts' first signing of the January transfer window and the first under-manager Dean Holden. Bon explained he was excited to return to Charlton and hungry to get back to scoring goals at the Valley. He said, this club changed my life. I came from playing non-league to the championship and they took a hit on me when no one else would. I have a lot of respect for the club. None of what I said in the past was ever meant to disrespect the club whatsoever. I am back here now to pick up from where I left off, scoring goals, making people and myself happy in football, and that is very important. Holden said, I've spoken to McCauley in depth for those couple of years. He's been away. He's not enjoyed it like he enjoyed it here. He's absolutely loved playing for this football club. He chases everything down. He's a goal scorer. He's got championship experience and he scores goals at this level last season with Ipswich. He's really hungry to put that shirt on and do well for this football club and that, for me, it tells me everything I need to know. Thomas Sangard then, of course, gives his thoughts about the signings, which I'm not going to bother reading because it's the same old stuff every time and to be honest with you, I don't really want to give him the light of day. Born in East Anglia, Bond joined hometown club Ipswich Town, age eight and following a spell with Norwich City, signed for Colchester United. After starring for the U, academy teams the forward made his professional debut in October 2013 four days before his 19th birthday he stayed in Essex until the summer of 2017 where he completed a move to Leighton Orient Bond bagged 45 goals in 90 National League appearances to earn his move to Charlton to seal his move to Charlton sorry where he continued his goal-scoring form to earn a switch to QPR. He spent three seasons at Loftus Road before agreeing to the mutual termination of his contract earlier this month. Bond trained with his new teammates at Sparrows Lane on Thursday and is available for Saturday's game against Barnsley at the Valley. He will also wear the number eight while he's at the club, taking over Jake Falstakaski's number. So that is the Macaulay Bond article. Now we'll dive straight into Todd Kane's article, the second signing of the transfer window, and of course joining the club on loan. Charlton Athletic are delighted to 
confirm the signing of versatile fullback Todd Kane on loan from Coventry City until the end of the season. The 29-year-old brings a wealth of championship experience to the Addicts, having made 186 appearances in English football second tier after coming through the Chelsea Academy. He becomes Charlton's second signing of the day and the transfer window following the return of striker Macaulay Bond. Kane explained he is looking forward to playing at the Valley. He said, it feels great to be a Charlton player. I'm really looking forward to it and I can't wait to get started. It's been going on for about 10 to 14 days and now while it's done, I'm just excited to be here. For me, it is important to play games and come somewhere where I feel I was wanted and I can help the team. I spoke to the manager and it was very pleasing. I've had numerous conversations in the past with him and I just have a nice feeling about it. I feel that at this time right now, it's most important to be happy and to enjoy my football again. This is the right place for me, I believe. Holden said Todd has proven quality in that fullback slash wingback position and is a fantastic technician in terms of his use of the ball and set piece delivery. He is a bubbly character who lives for his football and he is someone who I've spoken to in good detail and have known for a long time. He has a point to prove coming in on loan until the end of the season and gives real quality to the squad in addition to what we have already got. Then of course there's the Thomas Sangard quote as I've said I'm not going to read it. Kane came through Chelsea's Youth Academy and had loan spells at Preston North End, Blackburn Rovers, Bristol City and Nottingham Forest before joining NEC Niemengen on loan in 2015, that of course being in Holland, where he made 31 appearances in Holland's top tier. Kate mentions it anyway. He also made 11 appearances for Groningen in the 2017-18 season before joining Oxford United on loan. After a successful loan in the Championship with Hull City in 2018-19, he signed for Queen's Park Rangers before joining Coventry in 2021. And the article then of course reveals that Kane also trained with his teammates and will also be available for the Barnsley game and that he will wear the number 16 for the Addicts this season. So there are the club's articles about the two signings. Now it is time to get into my thoughts about the two, beginning with the first of the signings that we made, that being Macaulay Bond, of course, making his return to the Addicts. Now, yeah, I think we all saw this one coming. Obviously, we were linked with him in the summer transfer window. Of course, the rumoured loan deal that we were going to bring him in for collapsed. And then the whole debacle happened um, with the whole social media post, which I may as well address now because it is the elephant in the room. And I will say full credit to Dean Holden for addressing it, because I think many managers would probably just brush that under the carpet and just wouldn't really give it the light of day. But Holden addressed it. And I would highly recommend watching his interview in regards to the two signings, particularly pay attention to what he said about Macaulay Bond, because I thought it was really interesting. And like I say, he addressed the main issue, with which of course is in regards to the comments that he made when he left the club, obviously saying that his head was turned for the QPR move. Realistically, though, if you were in Bond shoes, I can understand why uh, he would want to move away from the club. You know, obviously it's championship football and he most certainly would have got a bigger paycheck out of it. And of course, the club benefited from it as well. You know, 200k, we signed him from Leighton Orient and sold him for 2 million quid. And unfortunately for QPR, they got absolutely robbed of that transfer fee and Charlton benefited quite nicely. But as I say, you know, those comments would definitely have left a sour taste in the majority of Charlton fans' mouths, myself particularly. And then of course, the one that, many Charlton fans really got annoyed with was the Instagram post that he made, of course, the Leonardo DiCaprio meme um, that he read after the um, after the, the move fell through. Now, as many journalists and as Macaulay has said um, about that post, it's claimed that it wasn't aimed at Charlton and that it was aimed at QPR because apparently QPR wanted to move him on permanently. Uh, Charlton didn't want that. We wanted to just loan him in and QPR wanted to get rid of him and ultimately the deal fell through and apparently Bond was a bit um, uh, hot-headed and he ended up tweet, uh, posting that and it was aimed at QPR. Now, whether you believe that or not, I am just glad that I think it's just in the air now and the fact that it was addressed and it wasn't just brushed under the carpet because the thing with this signing is I think many Charlton fans will agree with me when I say I don't think Bon is the answer to our problems and I don't think he's the striker that many fans would have wanted. Don't get me wrong, I think I would have him over Chucks and EK and St Jaden Stockley because the thing with Bon is he is a proven scorer. He can score goals. And we've seen that from his time at the club previously. He stepped up, you know, when Lyle Taylor got the injury and we didn't really have that many good striking options that season besides him. You know, we had obviously Bon and we had Lecco and we had Tom Hemed and we had Andre Green in January. We didn't really have that many options that were on Lyle Taylor's quality. And I think Bon stepped up massively in that championship season. You know, 11 goals in 36 appearances. He was in red hot form at the halfway stage of the season when we had that injury crisis. And it's pretty fair to say his move to QP 
QPR did not work at all. He was a complete flop there. And obviously, understandably, QPR decided to terminate his contract. Of course, he did have a spell at Ipswich in between then. Uh, he went on loan to Ipswich last season where he started the season really well. You know, you would look at his statistics and say, you know, 12 goals and four assists. That's pretty damn good. However, the goals that he scored in that period, I think, were in the first half of the season. Like, he faded massively in the second half of the season, which... I am concerned about and I am also slightly worried about the signing in general in terms of obviously the past and whether he is actually being truthful with what he's saying and whether he actually does, you know, want to be here. I will say with the short term acquisitions, I do like that in terms of Macaulay Bomb because it puts him under that bit of pressure, you know, with the whole thing that's happened in the past, it puts him under that pressure to win over the fans. So the fact that he's got four months to come in, hit the ground running and score goals I, I do like that. You know, it shows that, you know, he's not got that security here. He has to earn his place at this club if he wants to be back here. And ultimately, that's what he has to do with the fans as well. He has to earn the trust from the fans back. And ultimately, I think if he does score goals, I don't think any Charlton fan would really mind. So that is Macaulay Bond. Definitely controversial. Now, let's get into the second signing, of course, being Todd Kane. Now, this is a completely new one. Obviously, Kane has never been at Charlton before. He's a new face and he joins a club on loan from Coventry City. Now, as the article alludes to and mentions, he has an abundance of experience. Of course, 29 years of age, has played a number of games at Championship level. I say a number of games, 186 games. That's a lot of experience and has played for numerous clubs. Obviously, Blackburn, Bristol City, Forest, Preston. Of course, came through the Chelsea Academy and he is among the many list of names that came through the Chelsea Academy, never played a senior game for Chelsea and was loaned out numerous times to several clubs. Obviously, he's had obviously uh, spells in Holland as well with Neumengen and Groningen as a spell in League One as well with Oxford, where I believe he scored against us in the season he was there. I remember, I think it was the 3-2 um, defeat where we lost it late on. Of course, he had a spell with Hull City. Uh, then he moved to QPR permanently and he's obviously been at Coventry where unfortunately for him, he has had games hard to come by this season. He's played just nine times this season at championship level. So he is struggling for football. And what I will say with Kane is that his interview um, when he joined the club is really good. I think he speaks really, really well. You can tell that he is really passionate about the game and that he does really want to come to a club and play games. And that is why ultimately he's made the step down to League One because he thinks that he can get games here and he wants to, you know, reignite I suppose his love for football again so I do really like that about him he obviously speaks well and Holden mentioned it you know he is a lively bubbly character so I do like that about him the thing that I am a bit intrigued with is his position because you would definitely look at it and say that we don't really need a right back because that is his prominent position. Now, the thing with Kane is that he is versatile. You know, he can play, obviously, fullback. I think he can play centre-back. I may have that wrong. And he can also play in midfield. So it does leave a number of questions that I have. But I think the main two points for me is, one, whether Kane is actually going to get games here. And second of all, where he's actually going to be utilised. Because like I say, he is a right back. And we obviously have already two uh, right backs at the club right now that of course being Sean Clare who's been a regular in the team this season and playing really well and Mandela Regbo who of course is out injured currently now th the signing of Kane kind of indicates to Egbo's injury being more long term than we thought and it kind of gives me the impression that he's going to be out for a, a lot longer it could very well be a season ending injury which I, I hope that it isn't and I'm just I, you know I, I, don't, I don't know that I'm just reading in between the lines with the Kane signing um, we could also play Kane in the middle of the pitch uh, because I believe we are interested in another midfielder because, of course, we've moved Forster Kasky on and we could very well move on other midfielders. I think Conor McGrandles could be one we could move on. Aaron Henry could go out on loan. So there's a lot of question marks. We think very similarly to the Bond signing, it is very low risk in the sense that it is on loan. And, of course, Kane is out of contract at the end of the summer at Coventry. So if he does do well for us and we look to sign him permanently, we can go in and get him on a free. So... With this one, like I say, he offers experience. He's another body in the team. He's probably the wrong side of the pitch in terms of fullback that I would like us to sign because I don't really think we needed the right back. But I think the signing of Kane hints to Egbo's injury being a lot more long term than we previously feared. Or we could very well play him in the middle of the pitch or even Sean Clare could push into midfield. So it gives us that freedom. So I suppose it's not all bad in terms of competition because I think ultimately that is the most important thing that we needed in this team. Competition. We needed bodies. We needed depth. And we have got that now up front and also in the fullback position. So yeah, those are the two signings. We fully expected it. Sangob was never going to invest in the club. So we're just going to make do with what we can. And let's face it, at the very least, we have got competition coming into the team. Whether that is good competition and good depth coming into the squad, only time will tell and it is down to Maka and Toddy to make that impression and hopefully 
they can come in, hit the ground running, and they can win over these fans. So that is it for this episode of Alex Editions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, turn on those post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video. Welcome back to Cholton, Macaulay, Bon, and welcome to Cholton, Todd Kane. I hope you can settle in well, and like I say, I hope you can hit the ground running and help us out this season. What do you guys think of the two signings? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Tyler Ronaldson. Have a nice day, and I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.